You guys hear me okay? Yes. We're beyond that. It's intimidating. It's crazy. And I'm an English speech and debate teacher of 31 years. I'm so glad to be here with you live, not zooming in, because I think it's time we get our human on. I'm not much for data, listening to the facts. I start everything with the kid. And what had ended up happening was, I'm looking at most of you, I'm going to bet you have family, you have children. Some of us, as we start to get older, will have grandchildren. And anybody could have been in our position. I got a buck in my wallet. I'm going to bet you'd do anything you could for them when you feel that there's nothing left. I had, on that Friday, something happen with basically bureaucracy and different things. Thanks, babe. She's the brains of the group. When we couldn't get digital signatures back and forth, I worked for over five hours from Morley Stanwood High School with my best friend, Jamie Nelson. And as I drove away, she had contacted me and we were just lost hope. And when I pulled into the parking lot, all I could think was I've keynoted around the country for the past 10 years with Best Keynote. And I've talked to educational community and everything I've said was it's not about the test scores, it's not about the curriculum, it's not about your evaluation. You start everything you do and you walk in that classroom with the kid. And I'll go to my grave. But I've always done it for other people. And the videos I put out from a Kit Kat bar and how it represents life to the one that went viral on suicide with 700 and some thousand views, I thought, you know what? It's my kid this time. And I set it down. I looked in the rearview mirror. And I looked at that sign going in for my 14th night with my boy. I thought, it's my turn. And you got my heart. You got my soul. And within 24 hours, my boy was placed. I'm sorry, babe. Our boy was placed, and I had so much support and help, but immediately when I talked to her as this started to happen, she said to me, what about the others? What about the ones who don't have this resource, don't have this following? I was lucky enough somehow, somewhere, I don't know why people follow me, you guys. I don't. I've been told I'm brutally honest. I'm told I have defiance of authority syndrome. No, I have a defiance of ignorance. I will stand up and I will question left and right. We are not angry at anybody. We had loved Gratiot Hospital. They were phenomenal to us. They did everything they could, and I shared tears with the nurses. We're not angry at any legislature. We're not angry at Blue Cross and Blue Shield. They reached out. I've talked to the chairman of the board's liaison, the head physician for Blue Cross Blue Shield. They are so willing to help. It's a system that somehow we're repeating it over and over. It's just the saddest thing in the world. And I'm going to bet you somewhere in this state right now, and I'm going to tell you straight up, I love Michigan. I love everything about it. I'm 57 years old. I'm never leaving this state unless I'm vacationing, hopefully, with my family on the 28th. I want to take him to Disney so bad. He's never been on a plane. He's never been to Disney. We were swimming with dolphins and stuff, and I want him to get the help he needs so bad to share this, because otherwise I don't think we're going. But I look at it from the standpoint, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought at that point. It's hard, because I know, I look at each one of you in your eyes, Representative Beeson, you and I shared one heck of a story, and I know, I felt you. You have hearts and you have souls. And I keep looking at it from the money standpoint. You have jobs to do, and I respect that. But what I wish, we could go up into, he's got lunch ready for us afterwards. Sit around, talk, and just jam with our brains and brainstorm to try to see from the entities that it is. Because this is a us thing. And like I said, we need to get our human on because we're losing kids left and right. 31 and a half years at Shepherd High School. 29 deaths. Nine were by suicide. And when you have a kid in your classroom on a Friday and you get a note on a Sunday, he took his own life, and that desk is empty on a Monday, something's wrong, you guys. I didn't get into teaching for money. She didn't either. But it is the most rewarding profession on this planet, and I will go to my grave telling you that. I'm going to turn it over to the brains right now. I just need a sec. Hey, babe. Hi, I'm Joanne. I, I've, I've completely changed my thought. Um, talking to some of you as we came in. Warm, welcoming, glad that we're here to share our story. I came in, you know, for the last couple of days being invited down here. I thought we were coming in for a fight. We're going to have a fight. No. It's not what it's about. It's about people being human and working together. We have been through the last couple of weeks of the most god-awful things you can imagine. Uh, we consider ourselves educated people. You know, we have our degrees plus more. 
to try to navigate the system to get help for our children. I, we have three boys. Our youngest is our oldest, the one that's having issues. It's his biological brother, and he has autism. And we learned last week that there was actually a diagnosis for our oldest that he's autistic too. I've had Jordan tested three times. I was turned away by community mental health services. I tried in 2018, I tried to get their services. He didn't qualify. Was it an insurance thing? Not sure. I was told in closed doors that it's because he doesn't have ODD. That's unacceptable to me. So of course, what would any normal parent do? I've been out making phone calls. You should see the list. I, I, I quit trying to keep track of who is who. I call one person, they're not available. I go up the chain. They brush me off onto somebody else. I cannot tell you how many times I've been brushed off. Our boys are adopted. Our middle child, Jake, that I haven't mentioned, he's from a whole different genetic pool, all right? So, um, I just lost my train of thought. Yeah, they're adopted. And when you adopt a child, you know, they, they're already part of the system. The, our two boys, the oldest and youngest, they spent 14 months in foster care as it was. Ours was the fourth home that our son came to. When you adopt a child, everything is rosy and you don't really pay attention to the forms that you're filling out and you've got this and that or whatever. There's a thing that's called subsidy, trying to get medical subsidy to have assistance. Well, they'll only give you subsidy for pre-existing conditions. At that time, Jordan had speech and hearing difficulties, which should have been a red flag, I think, back at the age of two or three. Now here we are 12 years later, nobody has a crystal ball, and I'm trying to find out. I brought this folder today, and I, you, can, you can look it up for yourself, but I have any kind of documentation that you want to see that we have to fill out. Some of the things that I'm being asked to fill out right now are impossible because of the situation we're in. We, we chose to take him to an ER based on recommendation of professionals. That was our first mistake. Because our son sat in the ER for 15 days until my, until my husband created that video. And I really wasn't too hot on my husband turning that video out. It took quite a bit of convincing. She's tough. Um, as a result of that video, we finally saw movement. When I'm reaching out to lawmakers the week before, you know there's a, a problem. The hospital staff was coming to me going, this is pretty much the last resort. And then other people told me and my husband, as a last resort to get help for your child, you need to abandon your child. You need to walk out of the ER and say you're done. And then CPS is going to come in. Abandon my child. No, that's not, that's not on the table for us. I stood in, in the courthouse at Isabella County, and I made a promise to Judge Irvin that would not happen. I am there for our children. But now we're on the struggle bus, and I keep getting brushed from one person to the other person, and this insurance covers this, and this insurance covers that. Now, I can't get the subsidies. There are things I literally cannot do. After being brushed off by uh, CMH, and denied services in 2018. Now here, fast forward three years later, after I've exhausted all of these other things privately, I'm being told that I have to exhaust services by CMH. I'm being told that I ha we have to exhaust at least two on a list. I brought that documentation if you need to see it. One of them has to be home-based services. I ask you, my son is in the ER. How am I going to do that? How am I going to get the help for my child? You have all of these stars you need to align. I'm thrilled to hear earlier that they're opening up more beds. Because it's a combination of a whole bunch of different things. Is there a bed that's available? It, 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 does the insurance that you have cover it? You know? And, and then, if I do get that subsidy, there's, there are things that are put in place. You know, it's got to be within 200 miles of the home. The parents are responsible to find placement. You know, some of the places that they had called um, turned us away because they wanted a DHS referral, they said. Well, really what I think they mean is they want to make sure that they're going to get paid. And meanwhile, our child sat in the ER. And me, I'm experiencing trauma right now as a mom. I've been up, down, cry here, 
get mad there. I'm getting to that mad stage if you can't tell because I want to help my child, our child, and I can't. My hands are tied. And then somebody tells me to abandon my child, abandon my child to make that happen because our system is failing us. The system that's put in place right now, it is ridiculous we spent seven hours, seven, on Friday. Part of it, I was sitting next to my son in the emergency room with a laptop without having a desk or anything to work on, literally having that sitting there trying to keep him company, working on these documents, trying to turn them in, just to turn in signatures. It's through Adobe, Microsoft Word. He ended up having to work along with the techie at the school to try to get that stuff filled out. Really? And then not even to get acknowledged that finally, after all that effort, that it wasn't it wasn't even acknowledged that it was approved. And then find out we were actually approved for that the following Monday. So three days later, I found out, oh, well, guess what, we're approved. Found out from somebody else. And now I need to turn around for the next one and fill out all of this other paperwork. And even through that, we're not blaming the young lady that we worked nope. with. We didn't, and we weren't angry with her. And That's I made sure job. that she knew that she's following procedure. And I just said to her, I feel so bad for you because when I talked to the people in the ER and we both said, if they thanked us one more time for being so good about the situation, I said, will you please stop? Well, we get more violent people, more angry, the swearing, the yelling from parents. That doesn't do any good. We want to jump in a boat with you guys and row together because we have felt, and i sorry, it's the English teacher in me. We're in a boat this week, past two weeks, this month, with one oar with about 14 other boats rowing around. Nobody knows where they're going. Nobody's talking to each other about where they're going. Nobody's jumping in and helping each other. And there's no lighthouse in sight. I would love to find every single entity from Blue Cross Blue Shield, from Community Mental Health, anybody on here, I'm gonna tell you what, Representative Beeson's heart, he and I can get along really well because we've been through this. And I have some friends and parent rental advocates I trust with anything in my house, my children, my dogs, not my wife. But you get to that point where I look at it and I go, why can't we all get in the same boat row together? It doesn't have to be so formal and find a way because this is, I, I tell you what, I have beyond respect for you people down here, what you deal with and what you must close your eyes laying in bed thinking about every single night. This is one of the problems you guys got to deal with. I don't even know how Governor Whitmer does it because this has been one of the most difficult years we've ever seen. I know that I retired after 31 years and on 34 days later, one of my closest friends who was a former student hired me over at Morley Stanwood says, come do what you do with my kids over here. So I'm teaching speech and debate. And it's the best move I ever made. But what the best part about it was, he goes, we're face to face. We're in the classroom. I know how you are about people. Because I won't speak nationally right now virtually. It's not me. I want to be in the crowd with those educators, administrators, bus drivers, parapros. I want to be one of them as a team. I'm not standing on a stage behind a podium. I want to be part of a team. There's no one important than the other. And when I sit there with the kids in this, when you, when you see them in their homes, because I never required the children to be in video. Some of them didn't want to be seen in their homes because they're embarrassed. They would hide in closets and different things so you didn't see their home because some of the other kids' homes are absolutely beautiful. I never did that. And if they're ghosting me, so be it. If I'm not a good enough educator to hold their attention, what am I doing there? Am I just sitting there reading a PowerPoint? I could send them that information and not waste their time. But I keep looking at the situation going, we got to get the kids somehow feeling that confidence, feeling that strength. And I'm sorry. I, I, I'm sorry if it offends people. I don't start with test scores. I don't start with curriculum. I don't start with my evaluation. I have two classes at Morley Stanwood right now, and I got my CTE kids. I call them my gearheads. I love them. The energy sometimes gets misguided, but I love them because they're so hands-on. They want to get out and build cars. They want to get out and do things. And then my next class, band kids. Those are the cool kids. Says the state teacher of the year for band of <laughs> Michigan. Yeah, nice try. But the band kids, the college-bound kids, the ones that are academically super strong in what they want to do, and it's night and day. And I sit there with them watching them, and I'm thinking, if i got to go virtual, my heart's going to break. Because we laugh, we cry together. We've had tears shed in my classes, and I've only been over there for about six weeks. And I remember the second week, a young lady, she come up to me and looked right at me. She goes, you're the reason I'm coming to school. This is what we got to keep doing. 
And that same young lady looked at me and she says, I had needed a mental health Monday. She didn't come to school on Monday. And my heart sinks. I've been through too much of that. I don't have a solution. And I'm going to bet you right now if I put a magic wand in each one of your hands, if you could wave it and solve this, you would in a heartbeat. But I want to bring that human side in. I know it's money so many times. I know it's money. Other people can talk that. I want to get our human on together in the same boat. And I want to find a way. And there's nothing my wife and I won't do. We'll find time. We'll find time. Jordan's journey's on its way. But the thing that's killing us is when they tell us, and I heard multiple, people trust me, and I'm going to keep it very clean here. When a parent walks into an emergency room with an eight-year-old they can't handle, admits them, and turns around and walks away while the child's screaming in the nurse's arms, we are going to pay for that down the road. But my heart breaks. I refused to let my kids sleep one night alone. And I never saw this coming. We figured, we waited. He's going to be in. He's going to get the help. I didn't do this for the glory. I didn't want to come. It's nice being down here, but I didn't want to come down here. I could be teaching right now. And I get to that point going, we got to be able to do something together. I'm not leaving Michigan. I love this state, and so does my wife. We want to retire and be buried here. There's nothing you can ask of us that we won't do if it's within our power. What do you got? I have we have six minutes stuff. left unless there are questions. I have six questions. minutes left. You, we have six minutes left. You get four. You talk a lot. <laughs> vows, the vows. I would love, he always says vows mean nothing to me. Anyway, um, if I could see anything and see my druthers, I, I would love to have a more streamlined process. There's got to be some sort of a bypass. You know, I should be able to reach out to you and go, can you help me out here? Absolutely. She's, you know, give her a bypass. Or may, maybe trust the professionals in the ERs to say this, this child needs to be serviced right now and work together instead of making each other jump through these hoops. And it's not the fault of the people that are sitting at the state level that I'm calling. It's not their fault. They're, fa they're doing their job. It's the system that's in place for them right now. I'm just saying we need to change the system up a little bit to make things better. In the long run, you know, I don't want my child, I'm trying to be proactive right now, which I think is very commendable, because I have, we have less than three years left with our child before he can go out and he can be on his own if he chooses. Now I'm being told that, you know, he has autism and, you know, some other issues that he has to work out. He doesn't get a bed. He doesn't get the help that he needs. He ends up back home until he does act upon those threats. We are turned away from places because our son doesn't act upon the threats. To me, that's not acceptable. I'm trying to be proactive so it doesn't come to the point where he's acting upon those threats. What if he decides to act upon those threats at school? Now, am I a neg ne negligent mother? I have the documentation to show that I tried to help him. So I would like to see us put something in place that they can hit a bypass button. The professionals in the ER can say, they need help now. When, when families are going through these situations to try to fill that paperwork and keep a clean head, a, a clear head, people explain to me over and over again what the difference is between residential and inpatient and what this insurance covers and what that insurance covers and what you need to do for this. You know, while, while I'm standing outside in my husband's ER, do you think my brain is with them right now? No. I'm suffering trauma too. And so are my children at home. There's got to be somewhere that we can go. You are, you know, maybe I'll start my own group. And, and eventually, you know, you could call me and you could say, all right, Joanne, you're on. And I'm down to the hospital and I'm, I'm walking them through. I'm holding their hand. I'm saying, this is exactly what you need to do. So we're winding down. Um, thank you for your.